Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. Today we're doing a urethane cement flooring in this kitchen right here. This is the Haystack School of Maine. It's a music school way down East Maine, right on the coast. And they need a they need a new floor to go in their kitchen, so we're going over wood. You guys check this out. Right there, we got a floor drain. You see we got a floor drain, we got a match. Here's the other part of the kitchen. So that's what we're doing today, guys. Uh, urethane cement over plywood. So what we're doing now is we're prepping the, the plywood for the coating and we're just making sure there's no gaps. The customer had a tile floor in here before. It wasn't really holding up to the kitchen. So they, they took out that floor, removed all the crappy plywood that was under there, put in new two layers of three quarter inch plywood, and they screwed it down about every six to eight inches. So we're addressing any little gaps. We're, we're addressing the seams here. We got, uh, we got some epoxy paste that we're mixing up, and then we're going to put like a mesh tape over that, over all the seams you'll see here in a second. And that's going to just help keep those seams from transferring up through the coating so it's it's a precaution but if you're going over wood you definitely want to do this first if you're going over concrete and you've got cracks in the floor that you think might still be a little active maybe maybe not you know you can do the same thing over those cracks otherwise you just repair the concrete crack like you would any other crack um, I'll have a link for that at the end of this video if you want to learn how to repair concrete cracks so I'm just, I'm just basically using a putty knife and I'm spreading the epoxy out and Luke's just pressing the mesh tape over the wet epoxy. So this is the, this is the coating we went with the urethane cement, Polycrete SLB from Duraflex. Now all kinds of different companies make this urethane cement. You know, I went with Duraflex because I'm a trained installer for them and they got really good products right out of Connecticut. So I like them. So this is a seamless 316 inch, 100% solid cementitious urethane. Self leveling, self priming, and it's used for resurfacing concrete, you know, going over floors. Um, it's slip resistant. It, it's a two part urethane technology. It has an aggregate we broadcast on the surface, so it's very slip resistant. But it's also thermal shock resistant, which is really important for, you know, kitchens and food processing places breweries that places that really have to wash their floors down with really hot water so that's that's a key that's one of the reasons we mainly use it in kitchens you could use it in a garage you can use it obviously over concrete um, over wood like we're doing today but it uh it works really good the system what we do is like this is concrete here we're going over wood but the primer is optional You'll see that we actually did use a primer on the wood floor that we're doing. I'll talk to you about that when we get back to the, the video, but it's the body coat, which is that Polycrete SL, and then you broadcast the quartz into it, and then you put a pigmented, a colored top coat on it, and they got, you know, a bunch of different top coats depending on what you're, what you're putting it on. But here's some of the keys about this stuff. It's really, really abrasion resistant, so it's a tough, it's tougher than epoxy slip resistant because of the quartz you're putting in it. It's also a moisture mitigating product. So if you got like moisture issues, you can put this stuff down and it does help block moisture from coming up through your floor. You don't need a separate moisture system for this. Self leveling. I mean, it goes on like self leveling concrete and it's very, very chemical resistant. And again, thermal shock resistant right here, guys. So excellent, excellent product. Urethane cement. If, uh, you got any more questions obviously leave them down in the comments below and we can talk about them in there and then what we'll do afterwards is we're gonna we're gonna roll on a a uh, flexible waterproof coating right over everything to to make the plywood waterproof but it's also flexible so if there did happen to be any flex in the plywood um, this flexible coating will help keep the urethane cement from from cracking you know down the road you don't, you don't really need the flexible here. You could do just the urethane cement, but it's just an added insurance and it's, 
it's not that expensive there I didn't get the rolling on of that but it's basically the same stuff we was using for the joints you can see the plywoods a different color so it's a two-part epoxy and we just roll it on let it dry and then we can come right back and do the coating right afterwards so Darren's mixing up the coating the urethane cement is actually three parts it's a it's a it's a resin it's a hardener and then there's a, an aggregate a small bag of aggregate we put in we mix in with it and then we dump it on and we use a gauge rate to level it out Luke's gonna use kind of a hand trowel because we have so many tight edges here so he'll hand trowel it around I'll have a you'll see I'll have a little gauge rake in my hand here in a minute and I'll just what the gauge rake is set to is 3 16 of an inch so I'm making sure the the coating is at all the right thickness and then we have what's called a spike roller so this roller has it's it's plastic but it's got these spikes on it that are about three quarters of an inch long just like a paint roller there it is right there and you roll those that spike roller through it after you gauge rake it and that just helps helps level everything out it's pretty much self leveling on its own but you'll still get you'll still get a little bit of seams here and there from dragging that gauge rake through it plus you'll get the lines from the gauge rake so the spiked roller just helps smooth everything out you'll see here in a second I'm going to use that Luke's just making sure everything's everything's coated really really good he's matching that floor drain you definitely don't want the floor drain <laughs> higher than the the coating because we want them to be able to wash this kitchen and have all the water go right down the drain obviously Darren's mixing up the next batch each batch goes on you know it's depending on how thick you go but about 50 square feet that's how you just you just simply get it spread out with the gauge rate and then you just roll the roller through it and this stuff I mean there's a time there's a time limit to this stuff that all this has to happen you definitely got to be trained to use this stuff although it's pretty user friendly but you just need to know the times as far as getting it down getting it rolled out and getting the uh, aggregate broadcast into it that's coming right up you're gonna see me broadcasting the aggregate here in a second we're gonna get this next batch down first That batch right there is probably going to finish this up. So we're going to just get this rolled out. We don't want to dump too much out because all the all the other flooring in here is finished flooring. We got it taped off pretty nice, but we don't want to make a mess. And you don't really want to leave this stuff in the bucket too, too long. So we've got to hustle with it a little bit. I'm wearing, I'm actually wearing cleats so I can walk back up into it if I need to a little bit. But we're being real fussy with these edges. We want to match these edges to that new floor. We don't want any lip there. We want just a nice, nice good uh, transition from this floor to their new floor. You can see we got the gauge set. There's some little pins on each end of that that you can set to whatever thickness you want. I got that from Duraflex too. And then uh, you could go eighth inch, quarter inch, you know, up to three quarters of an inch if you wanted to typically we'll put this SLB you know your thane cement from an eighth inch to you know three eighths is typically the coverages we use so like I said you you mostly most of the time we use this stuff we're going over concrete with it you know some type of concrete floor whether it's in a kitchen, a brewery, or something like that. And we just grind the concrete and then we can go right over it. As long as it's not too porous, we can go right over it with this stuff. You don't it's self-priming, like I said. You can see me, I'm in the back on the other side of that kitchen. I was throwing a little bit of aggregate. That's what that white stuff is. It's the aggregate, the quartz sand I'm throwing on it. And I'm just getting this last piece rolled out, evened out really nice. You can see how the the spiked roller kind of kind of flattens and levels it and then it just self levels on its own then you give it you know you give it a few minutes and then you broadcast this sand into it and what you're looking for what I'm looking for here is I'm just looking for a dry surface nothing shiny I don't need to completely cover the whole thing with white sand 
I just don't want any shiny spots after I broadcast the sand into it. And this process, I mean, this stuff dries pretty quick. If uh, you probably could do this whole thing in one day, we did it in two days. We came down, did all the prep, did the waterproof epoxying in one day. It was actually pretty cold inside here, it's pretty chilly. And then we came back the next day and did this. So we got this, we got the vacuum in, we got the top coat on all in all in the second day. You'll see that all that in a second here. As far as square foot cost, you know, that's all gonna depend a little bit, depending on what you're doing. But in most cases, you know, if the if you're going over a pretty decent concrete floor and the prep isn't too bad, just pretty much just grinding, not a lot of repair and then you're broadcasting you know you're doing the SLB over that with the with this and the top coat you know you're probably talking anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks a square foot um, you probably could do it a little less if you're like if you're doing it pretty local and you actually got more square footage to do but that's just a general cost just to give you an idea so it's it's more it costs more than just epoxy or poly, even polyaspartic, but it's uh, it's pretty much like a bulletproof floor. This stuff is as close to concrete as you're gonna get as far as the coatings business goes. Very, very durable. So I'm just vacuuming up any loose sand. There's, uh, it's got really good grip to it now. And then we're gonna get right to the top coat. The top coat is actually gray also. We mix a pigment into it. That's what Darren's doing right now. So it's a pigmented top coat. It's pretty much like a urethane. Uh, Duraflex has their own top coats. So you can go back and check out their websites and check out their top coats. It's, it kind of depends what you're using it for really. If you're kitchen, garage, or any other thing, you could, you could use three or four of their different top coats for whatever. This stuff goes on pretty tight, so we're going to squeegee it down really tight and then just back roll it. And then that's that'll be as far as putting the top coat down. It dries pretty quick. I mean, four or five hours is pretty dry. We won't, you know, I, I don't recommend walking on it. I, I, I'd give it a full day before you come back and walk on something like this. But you'll see right here at the end just what this looked like after we were... After it was all cured and we had the tape and the plastic all picked up. We do a lot of these coatings, guys. I mean, epoxy coatings, flake coatings. We even do the metallic coatings. So if you want to learn about that kind of stuff, you know, definitely join the Concrete Underground. I've got some epoxy courses in there. I've got a metallic training in there. Um, and then, obviously, you get um, access to me in there. So you can talk to me through the community group you could email me we can talk whatever questions you need I'm in there to help you with urethane cements are a really good coating to learn how to do because there's a lot of kitchen floors and brewery floors that go in that people just don't do the right flooring in there and they don't last the bacteria in, in those areas will just eat the flooring but it definitely won't this it won't even harm this so this is definitely the go-to coating for anything that you're going to be washing, anything that's going to have food processing, any type of bacteria like that. You're going to want to do a urethane cement. So Luke's just getting that squeegeed out nice and tight. I'm cutting in those edges, trying to be as careful as possible not to get any on that other floor. That's the trouble with that blue tape. Even though it does it does uh, go down pretty nice sometimes it'll bleed through so you just still got to be careful when you're cutting in next to it now the top coat like I said it's actually pretty thin so I'm just gonna roll it out I'll get it all rolled out and then I'm gonna give it one final back roll just so I don't leave any roller lines and I you know I want it to dry as even and uniform as possible so I don't want any stop and start marks I'll go both ways with that get it rolled out 
and then you'll see right here how I'm going to do the finish coat on it, the final roll. That's about as fast as I roll it. So here's the final one. I'm going to just push and then lift. Start over, push and lift. And then that'll be my final roll right there. And then this is what it looks like when we're all done. So there's the, it actually dries a little bit lighter, although the lighting was a little better. And you can see it has a little texture to it, but it's real easy to clean up. So that's, that's how it came out, guys. Come out mint. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.